And of course, when, when you come in and do Dakago, you always bow, and the audience always applauds. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, typically, I would enter to music. Um, I don't have the music with me today, I'm very sorry to say. So what is, what is Dakago? So those who are experiencing Dakago for the first time, apologies in advance, right? Um, so two props, typically, for Dakago. We have these. What are these? This is a, a folding fan. Looks like this. Always plain white because it allows you to imagine. If there was a black dragon on there, you would just see the black dragon. So this becomes many things in Dakugo, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And then the hand towel. And this becomes many things in addition to what it actually is. So in Dakugo, you might have somebody fanning themselves perfectly fine. And then if they're hot, they might. Oh. Right, they might do something like that. But what else could these possibly become? Some of you have seen Dakugo, so go ahead and. Chopsticks, chopsticks right? Soba. Right, eating soba. All right, okay. So you have soba. Can you see in the back? Right, so. What if you had like a three foot noodle? How would that work? Let's try it. So you see how that works, right? So what could this possibly become? Well, many things. It could become a book, reading a book. If you're reading my book, it would be something like. <laughs> um, it could become. What could this possibly? <laughs> what is that? It's a hot potato, a roasted sweet potato. Specifically, right? You couldn't see the sweetness? <laughs> ah. So many things, of course, that can become, if you went to Dakugo, you saw him doing a bow and arrow. Um, what? Uh, a what? Soroban. Oh, soroban, yeah. Yep, you open it up right here, right? And he said, how much does it cost? Right. What? Sure. So basically what this goes to say is <coughs> you have these two props that become any number of things so the Dakugo storyteller needs your imagination, right? You have to have imagination. I don't wear silk kimono every day, but when I do, I always bring with me, especially in Oregon, oh no, oh no, oh no, <coughs> an umbrella. <laughs> right? Can you see it? You can see it, can't you? I see some people going, no, <laughs> that's not an umbrella. So what does Rakugo entail? Well, you have to do an apprenticeship. What is an apprenticeship? Well, do you go and meet a Rakugo master and say, give me practice? Well, you usually spend two or three years with a master. And every morning I would go to my master's house and I would, it would be my job to get fish, fresh fish on the way and I'd make breakfast with him. And he would... Uh, expect me to clean his house, do his laundry, wash his toilet, and I did all of these things. And six months go by and I realize, wow, I haven't learned a single Dakugo story. And I thought, well, no, now is not the, the time to be an impatient American. It's the time to be a dedicated and faithful apprentice, a deshi. So I keep my mouth shut and four more months go by. He has the cleanest toilet in all of Japan by this time. 
was cleaning it three times a day. I was also cleaning his split-toe socks, the tubby. Not in the toilet, though. <laughs> it was clean enough, though. And so after about a year, I go to him and I said, Some Mother Shisho, his name's Some Mother, Some Mother Shisho. When are we going to learn a Rakugo story? And he said, You are learning Rakugo. You're learning Rakugo every day. I said, I am? He says, Yes, you are. And I said, Well, what do you mean? He said, By being able to cater to every single thing that I want a clean toilet. Hot tea, nicely folded kimono, pristine white socks. You are becoming a master in your own right. Okay, a master of cleaning, a master of laundry, a master of taking care of you. Yes. And you're damn fine at it. <laughs> and I said, so no Dakugo training? No, no stories? He said, you can make stories up by our experiences together. And you always go to my shows, so pay close attention, because any show you see me do, you can then do it. Like, oh. But we're not going to practice one-on-one. -on -one. He said, no. <laughs> and so then I asked him, well, I've got to go back to America and tell people that I did more than learn how to wash your socks and clean your toilet and pick up your cleaning and answer the front door for deliveries. And he said, okay, 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 okay. Fine, if you really need to learn a story, let's go make dinner. I said, what about practice? He said, yes, just calm down, impatient American. And so what he did is he took me to the kitchen and we made something called sake, uh, uh, kasujiru is the name in Japanese, and that's a, a type of soup made in winter with something called sake lees. Have you heard of sake lees before? Who's had uh, Japanese sake before? Right, it's quite tasty, isn't it? And there's a process of making that. When they uh, filter the rice, it all settles down, the, uh, the sediment goes down to the bottom, and it creates this kind of cake of, you know, uh, I guess it's um, insoluble fibers and rice, and they would uh, take that and they would make things out of it. They wouldn't waste any bit of it, and they would have this kind of cake of sediment, and it was called sake kasu. And there's a Dakugo story called sake no kasu, and he says, you're going to learn the story, but I can't have you telling the story if you've never had this soup before. And so there we practice one-on-one. -on -one. He recited one line to me and said, repeat it. And we're cutting things, and we're cooking soup. And it took about 25 minutes to prepare, and at the end of 25 minutes, we'd basically gotten through this entire short story. And um, I was on cloud nine, but we weren't kneeling. It wasn't really traditional. And he said, there, how do you like that? I said, I like it a lot. So are we going to sit down and practice? He says, nope, you're ready. <laughs> and so that was the one practice I had with him. Uh, I also told him that you know I might tell it in English. And he said, sit down and let me hear you tell it to me in English. And he spoke no English. And he sat there, listened to it, closed his eyes, and did, mm, mm. 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 And at the end, he said, Hi, Hiroshi. That's fine. And I said, Jisho, did you understand that? He said, Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Well, so I can perform, I have your permission to perform that in English too. And he said, Absolutely. And um, he said, But change one thing. The character in the Japanese story, uh, the main character, his name is Kiroku, but he goes by Kiko or Ki-san. He said, Kiko doesn't sound really good in English. Make his name Kiki. <laughs> no, Kiki? <laughs> and so that's what I did. And anyway, um, this is the story that I learned from my master, uh, and I'm going to perform it for you in a mixture of English and Japanese. Eh! <laughs> Konnichiwa, konnichiwa, konnichiwa. Domo, domo. Itiru kaina, itiru kaina. Oh, oh. Dori wa tomotara, ki-san kaina. Oh, dozo, agari, agari. Doshita no. Eh, 
Come, Miti Mia, look at my face, huh? Pretty red, huh? Okay, yaro, one oka. Miti mi, one oka. Okay, yaro, miti mi, miti mi, miti. Oi, kite ruka. Uru sai na, omma ni. Ka wa kan ya kero, nan de sonne ya kai na? Dou shita no? Tatakareta no? Did you get hit by somebody? Is that why your face is so red? Chigao nga na. Non de kite en de, mo o sake ippai non de kita. You had sake? Oh, you had sake. Here I was thinking you were just a boy, but now you're acting like a man. How much did you have to drink? One cake about this big. You can't tell people you ate something and got drunk. You had that sake no kasa, didn't you? You're eating sake kasa, uh huh? So you had that and you got drunk. Okay, that's not very cool. <laughs> what you have to tell people is you had a big cup of sake and you had it in one of those big musashi no cups. Okay? Tell them that. Musashi no kore gorai nundan de. And don't only say that, tell them you had something to eat with it. Hmm, what would be good to eat with sake? Okay, tell them you had no. You had, hmm. How about tai no butsugiri with wasabi? Tai no butsugiri with wasabi. Thickly sliced tai, that snapper, with wasabi. Sauce sprinkled over the top. Tell them you had that with your sake and everybody will believe you. So, everybody will believe me if I tell them that? Okay, okay, yeah, okay, thanks. I'll tell them, okay, bye. Oh. I have to say that I had a big cup, big musashi no cup, and I had, what was it again? Tai no butsugiri? Wasabi no butsugiri? Hmm. Okay. Well, let's go over to Masan's house and let's try it out. Masan! Your face is a little red. What are you, sick or something? Do you have diarrhea? Diarrhea? No, I don't have diarrhea. No, I'm not sick. No, I, I've been drinking. <laughs> you? Drinking? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Nondita ne? Ha 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 ha. Ah, so ka. Dore gorai nonda ya. How much did you have to drink then? If you had something to drink. Just be. Okay. I had a musashi no, a big cup, musashi no cup this big, and I <laughs> drank it all down, and I got drunk. So you got drunk. What did you have to eat with it then, huh? Because nobody has a, a big drink like that and has nothing to eat with it. What do you mean you had brown sugar? Ah, I get it. You had... Sake no kasu, didn't you? You were eating sake no kasu and you got a little tipsy and now you're thinking you're a big man. Oh, I ruined that one. <laughs> okay. What was I supposed to say? Not kurozaku, but I did have kurozaku. Okay. Um, so, okay. Wasabi no butsugiri. Tai no butsugiri. Wasabi no. Ah, wakata wakata. Sakana o tabeta to tari no ina. Wakata. Choto! 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 Dare ya to. Kisan. What do you want? What do you want? Just you're making a racket out front. What can I do for you? E? Yeah. Kawa kayaro. My face is red, right? No, it's not. E? <laughs> Na, kawa kaku nai no? Nan de ene? 
いや、何飲んだ何え飲んだ ?You had something to drink? いや、but just, just wait a minute, wait a minute. どうやうわ !What are you doing? My face is red, right? Of course it's red. You were just slapping yourself in the face like an idiot. 何してんの俺の家の前で。いや、だからさ、飲んでるで、俺。俺って言って、うん、一人前男やな。<笑> Think you're big. So, okay, fine. I'll play along. How much did you have to drink? あのね、無駄しのね、これぐらい大きいの飲んだんやで。おいしかったよ。Okay, fine, it was good. You had that much to drink? Really? Okay, big man. All right. So, what did you have to eat with it? あのね、I had thickly sliced wasabi with a little bit of fish on top. <laughs> え<笑>わさびのぶつ切りと、タイかけた。それは逆やろ。You have that the other way around, don't you? <笑> I've made another mistake. 間違えたな、もう。<笑>もうこんなに間違えたら友達いなくなるで、ほんまに。いや、誰に言おうかな。いや、友達もういないからね。I don't have anybody to tell this to again. I know. I can just find somebody on the street. They'll believe me. But nobody's around. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, here comes somebody now. すいませんすいませんごめんくださいごめんくださいごめんくださいと。What are you doing? Watch where you're going. What? Huh? Your face? No, it's not red. お前はアホと違うか ?No, I'm not stupid. Just look at me. I'm looking at you. Can't you tell? No. どうしたらいいの何でもする。何でもしてあげる。お金いるかお金もあげる。No, I don't want your money. I've been drinking. よかったね。<笑> Can I go now? <笑> so you've been drinking. そうでしょだから次聞いたらダメだよ。えいや、何聞いたらダメあ、聞いてほしいの。あ、そう。What do you want me to ask you? Okay, fine. How much did you drink? そう。Help! Okay, I had a big musashi no cup, this big. Hi. Can I go now? No, you have to ask me the next one. What? What did you eat with it? あって何を食べたと聞かないとダメだよ。あ,あ、そう。ほんなら、あっては何だった何を食べたそうそうそう。<笑>それそれそれ。タイの分析とちょっとわさびがかけてあって、little bit of wasabi sprinkled on top of thickly sliced snapper. Can I go now? Yeah, but I think you should treat me to a drink because I said it perfectly. I don't know who you are. Look at young man. Let me just tell you one thing. You don't look like you have much experience with drinking, but it's not doing you very well. Look, that cold sake. It could do you in. It can kill you. Take it easy. Hey, don't worry. I cooked it up before I had it. 
ありがとうございました。はい、どうもありがとうございました。はい、はい、どうもありがとうございました。Well, that's, that's Sake no Kasu, and that's the one story that I have permission to tell.、Uh, I could tell anything I really want, but you know.、Uh, yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's、uh, Rakugo, and I'm, I'm, I'd be very happy to、uh, take any questions,、um, any comments, complaints too. So, when we were discussing this over the phone, what you were going to do, I was thinking you'd do an English version and a Japanese, and you mix them together. Does、yeah. it just like, tear your head apart to switch back and forth between Japanese and English that quickly? Well, um, no, um, no, it's not so bad. And, and I, I've, I've experimented with just Japanese, or、um, I actually did one.、Uh, the real reason I asked him to learn this story was because、um, my wife, who was working in Tokyo at the time, She said that her uh, department, um, which was teaching、uh, Japanese to engineering majors, they wanted to have a culture、uh, talk. And they said, How about Rakugo? Would you do a story in Japanese and then do the same one in English? And that was going to be this one. And、um, it was a great experience. They're a great audience. But、um, a lot of them understood Japanese, just like many people here do. And then when I, taught, when I told the same exact story in the other language, There was a little bit of taikutsu, right? They're, they're like, oh, this is the same story. But it was interesting because maybe it's in English and, ah, not a whole thing there. So I decided if I do bilingual, you know, mixing them、um, that way, I get everybody. And the native Japanese speakers in the group can hear how terrible my Japanese really is.、Uh, so it's, it's, it's a risk, and、um, I usually、uh, just perform in English, but no, it doesn't tear my brain apart. It's actually a lot of fun. The most difficult thing,、um, do you mean actually performing Rakugo or the apprenticeship? Yeah, yeah maybe both. Or um, well, um, the I've always been a performer.、Um, I have a background in performance, and so getting up in front of people or sitting down in front of people.、Um, Wasn't hard, and I even was doing other Japanese arts like shamisen and no. So I was used to sitting seiza.、Um, I can't feel my legs right now, and I probably won't be able to stand up for 15 minutes, but、um, I'm okay with it.、Um, <laughs> are you? Um, um, so that wasn't hard.、Um, I think、um, the hardest thing for me is I wanted to emulate my master exactly. So I was constantly worried if I didn't do it exactly the way he did it. And in the Japanese, he did it in, then I wasn't doing it right. But I learned in, in the process that that's not the case. Everybody is an individual, and you have to perform your own dakugo. But it took me a long time to, to learn that. And, you know, a lot of times we would just be sitting watching TV over dinner,、um, and I'd get to constantly pick his brain about dakugo. No practice, but I would constantly be able to ask him questions. And he said, Basically, think of Rakugo as an ABC art. Like, well, okay, what do you mean? He says, you have A, it's your starting point, and your characters are there. And then they go to B's house, and they do this. And then they go to point C, and then at the end, you have your punchline, the ochi. Those things cannot change. Everything that happens in between, have fun.、Um, so, um, You know, so some people take way more liberty than they should.、Um, other people you know, don't take enough liberty. But getting,、um, you know, here I was studying traditional Japanese culture, traditional Japanese storytelling. What do you mean I can make it my own? I want to do it exactly how my master does it. But that's not necessarily Dakugo. That would just be、uh, monomane, it'd just be copying. So, you need to make, at some point, you need to make it your own. And that was the difficult thing for me, realizing that it was okay for me, a non Japanese amateur, to do that. So, I was wondering how.
how the dialect factor in. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, see the story working, you know, it works wonderfully in Osaka dialect, but I can imagine this sounding a little bit too harsh in Edo dialect. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you were to perform in like Tokyo way or Edo way, mm -hmm. would you change something so that it sounds, you know, it, it captures the flavor of mm -hmm. the story? No. Um, because I, uh, well, I was basic. I've spent, gosh, close to 12 years in Japan, and probably 10 and a half of those have been in Osaka and Nara. So I, I studied Japanese, uh, and we <coughs> used the, the text JSL um, uh, at Portland State, and um, we learned Hyojungo, and we learned how to speak, you know, uh, Songkeigo, and so I know how to speak Hyojungo. But um, where I lived and where I learned Rakugo and learned to love Rakugo, that's the dialect. Um, so I don't think you can take that out of it. Um, it wouldn't feel right to me. Um, when I'm doing um, you know, uh, this character, Hiroku or Hiko, um, I just let him come to life. And the lines are going this and that. and uh, I may stumble on a line or two, but in my mind, who I'm presenting is that person who is from Osaka. So I, I, I wouldn't try to change it. Yeah, uh, there. Oh, yeah. Just sort of a related question. I'm not quite sure where I'm going, but um, <coughs> starting from your, uh, early on in your talk, you were, um, the style's entrance between Osaka and Tokyo are quite different. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and this relates to what type of Japanese you use to make something funny. Mm -hmm. Um, and when the Osaka person entrance came out, I thought, that's Osaka. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be recognized as that, maybe you thought, fine. When the Edo version came out, I thought to myself, that would just die off. There's not, nothing yeah. is interesting about that. Yeah. But going a little further, and you also mentioned <coughs> the major Taisho period, Tokyo disparagement of Osaka styles. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so this gets into the current interest of longer term, not so much rivalries, uh, because it's my sense that Osaka has its distinct longer term culture. Whereas Edo, um, I'm out of living here, I don't want to offend people, but in the Edo period there's Edo mm -hmm. um, I, I suppose there are still people who live in Tokyo who consider themselves descendants of Edo -Kong. Um, but it's basically a center of internal migration. And so, <coughs> is, it, um, is it wrong to perhaps have the perception that um, Rakugo and Osaka is actually a longer term living tradition representing distinct um, archipelago type of <laughs> Osaka people? Whereas, wherever it comes from Edo, it's sort of become its own stylized self, which doesn't, and it comes from um, Tokyo, sorry, and it comes from Tokyo, but it's not really Tokyo, because so many of them are from Tokyo, it doesn't represent anything distinctly from that region. So, <coughs> not having an end part of this question, but uh, in the broader Rakugo world, mm -hmm. uh, is there any sense of attachment to longer term Um, identity is a big play. It's a big part of Rakugo, um, and these identities are linked to one's master and to the master's master and tradition going back. Um, you know, it's usually not the storytellers though that are making connections to say um, Edo period Osaka or Edo period travel stories. Um, really. Um, they think that's usually the scholars that are making a problem of all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems that storytellers are usually not concerned with anything more than the previous one or two generations. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, they're still um, very aware and very um, willing to present uh, the fact that they are from Osaka or from Wakayama or from Nara. Yeah. 
Um, so regional identity is certainly always at play. Um, if you have people from Kyoto, um, there's a, a, a bit of material that's usually repeated by Kyoto storytellers when they come to perform in uh, Osaka, which is usually most of the time because that's where most of the venues are, though there are many places to perform in, in Kyoto, um, though not permanent establishments. Um, they say, you know, let me tell you about Kamigata, okay? I'm from Kyoto. My father was from Kyoto. My mother, family going back seven generations, was from Kyoto. My master was from Kyoto. And here we play, here we perform Kamigata Rakugo. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about this Kamigata. What does Kamigata mean? Hmm? Kamigata. Hmm? <laughs> so what is Kami? What does that refer to? The emperor. Right, and Gata is the region, area around. So if the emperor is where, originally? In Kyoto. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and where was the emperor not? In the Gata. <laughs> so I'm a Kyoto storyteller, so I'm not really Kami Gata. I'm Kami. <laughs> So, so region plays in, but it's usually tongue-in-cheek, um, half-joking, but also half-serious. I don't know if I, I answered your question entirely. Yeah, sure. What is the explanation? The self-consciousness, if that's it, that you might find among radical specialist performers in Tokyo. Um, yeah, um, I've been to Tokyo quite a bit just accompanying uh, my master Some Maru, and it's very rigid in dressing rooms in Tokyo. Um, there's a very strict hierarchy, and you know your place. So there's a little bit of flexibility in Osaka, although when it's your turn to take care of the dressing room and serve tea and take people's um, uh, haori uh, as their leaving the stage, you pick it up and you fold it up nicely and um, you do that, but there's a little more flexibility. Um, uh, it's very rigid. In that's my perception. That's, that's my impression, spending so much time in Osaka, in the Osaka Daku world and going there. Um, it's for s people who are supposed to be comedians and funny, Tokyo Daku Goka are sometimes painfully serious. <laughs> Um, now, when they're out with their patrons uh, and, and their fans, they've probably got to be the life of the party. But in the dressing room, they just sit and they cross their legs. And uh, you give them tea, and like, oh. It's, it's just very, uh, you know, mad, you know st strictly business sometimes. And uh, it's quite scary. Sometimes. That doesn't mean there's not scary people in Osaka in the dressing rooms. There are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, my experiences um, were usually pretty good. But again, like you say, there's always an exception to the rule. There's very serious people. Um, there's this stays here, of course, right? It's you can, you know, if, it, if you're posting it online, then if this person finds it, then I'll, I'll face the consequences later. <laughs> um, um, no problem. Um, but there, who, who is, um, he's going to be the next Harudanji. And this was kind of controversial. But um, his, what was his previous name? Uh, uh, Harunosuke, uh, Katsura Harunosuke. And he would come in and he would enter the uh, back of the building, go into the dressing room, and if his wa one of his deshi, who were supposed to be there, weren't there, you know, where the are you? you know, where, you're supposed to be here right now. Where are you? And you know, this is just as people are starting to come in to the yose, and, and you can hear this guy scream out in the audience. Ocha! 
there. It's like, so it doesn't say, bring me to you. It just says, day. <laughs> and so I was there. You know, it's just like, I just stay out of the way. Get down. Cover your head. <laughs> um, I, I'd, I'd seen some physical stuff, too. He'd have somebody by their collar, and he would, like, he would march. I don't know how he did it, but he like, carried somebody up a stairway. <laughs> um, but usually people are more um, yoki, you know, more cheerful in Osaka, but not always. Right? Um, at the risk of uh, not being yoki myself, we should probably end here because it's a little bit past seven. And uh, uh, everybody, please join me in giving my.